Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your June 2017 tarot reading. So um, I have some messages that I'm going to relay to you. And then we'll go pull out the spread and go into the reading for this month, okay? So I feel like this is a month of re-examination. Re-examining where you've been and where you're trying to go. And I feel for a lot of you, this is going to manifest in your professional career life, okay? What I feel happening is um, there might have been a few opportunities in the past. And for whatever reason, I feel like you might have passed them up. Uh, mainly because you weren't certain whether or not they were um, going to be good for you, whether or not they were going to plan pan out and create stability and longevity for you. But I also feel this element here about, you know, wanting to try things that are tried and true rather than venturing out, forging a new path for yourself. So there has been a lot of situations in the past where you have really held yourself back, mainly because, you know, you wanted something a lot more certain, a lot more stable and a lot more predictable. So that's um, the message I have here. And so moving forward, I feel that a lot of you, many people around you, and I feel like family members, close friends, for example, they're starting to make really good strides in their career. Like you, you start to see that their professional life is uh, really, you know, panning out. It's, uh, it's really becoming prosperous. And so some of you are comparing where you're, you're, you are right now, comparing the stability that you're feeling in your current work situation, the money that you're getting based on, you know, your salary, your, uh, the benefits that you're getting in the work environment. And you want to be where your peers are. You want to be, you know, also progressing. And so a lot of it boils down to the fact that I feel some of you have passed up uh, opportunities in the past, mainly because you felt like you weren't ready. You felt like, no, I don't want to take on that additional responsibilities. No, I don't really want to be in the public limelight. I want to work behind the scenes. I want to do something meaningful. And there's definitely absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I do feel that, you know, Virgos, you're meant for greatness. You're meant for greatness. And I feel like one of the strengths that you bring to the table in any work environment is that you are a stickler for rules regulations and um, I don't feel like that's a problem um, because you're such a, a good person for sticking to you know tradition and rules and regulations you are somebody that abides by the rules and so working in a context where you have to you know respect hierarchy you have to manage um, pro projects you have to do things in a methodically, in a procedurally correct manner, I feel that you've always been abiding by the rules, right? And people trust you because they see you as kind of like that pillar of moral authority. They see you as somebody who is very just, very wise, and also, um, I want to say like, uh, who has a moral compass, okay? So, in any work environment, you thrive really well because you follow things, you know, to the T. And um, I feel like it has worked really well for you to get you to a position of prominence. And because of that, you are also um, scoped out and, you know, solicited for positions of upper management. And I also feel because of that as well. There might be other areas, other places, other jobs that you want to do. It might not pay as well, but it might not pay as much as you, you're hoping to get. But I feel like it's a lot more rewarding and it's a lot more meaningful. And so one of the things I feel happening, I'm going to pull out one last card for you. Um, and there are other things that you want to do. And I do sense a majority of you. There's this element here about you wanting to give back to others, okay? So you're not hoarding power, you're not hoarding money. I feel that you you really wanna do work that is meaningful. You wanna be able to help people and you, you also know what it's like to work really hard and not get the recognition, not get the accolades that you know you deserve. And so you feel that you wanna give back to your community in some way, you want to give back to other people and you want to also provide the opportunities, the, the mentorship, so that other people can follow in your footsteps, so that other people can, you know, see a way out of their dire predicament. So I feel like many of you are committed to service. Many of you are really committing yourselves to making 
work finances um you know um structure to allow other people to rise okay so you are of service to humanity and um, I feel that the current environment that you're working in, there's a there's great compensation, there's great salary, there's um, you know potential for movement, and especially moving up in that career ladder, you know, um, being able to get into a managerial type of a position. And because you are somebody who is extremely hardworking, quite intelligent as well, um, people above you people below you, they have a great deal of respect for you. This is overall generosity coming through from an institution, generosity coming through from a hierarchical structure, so people working above you, supervisors, manager, they really appreciate your contributions and they know that you are one in a million and they can't really replace you. So I feel that um, this is not a month for you to um, to question your capabilities and I don't see that coming through so much but I feel like you have a specific way about you where you want to work behind the scenes and you want to do work that's meaningful but I feel that you're kind of being pushed or pulled into a, a position of power because people above you know that you don't seek power for power's sake you want to have power as a means to an end to be able to help other people to be able to change from change the system from within and to be able to reach out to a larger audience audience okay so this is a very noble cause that you're you're um, you're shifting gear towards the last card that I pulled out basically um, indicates you know fears and hesitations okay this is a card about you know charging forward doing so bravely not questioning your our capabilities and uh, you know at, at the same time it's a, a very adventurous card and um, what I feel happening is some of you are in a work environment where things are stable, things are going um, very, very well. And uh, others of you, you're facing some type of restructuring as well. And I feel this is um, also some coming through for the Taurian people. The energy is very similar. So if you have Taurus, you know, planets in Taurus, and especially uh, your rising or your moon or your sun in Taurus, you might also want to watch that, um, that, that video as well. Because I feel like there's some restructuring, and you're trying to figure out where you are supposed to be and where you're supposed to, you know, what's the next step in that career ladder? Like, what's the next project for you to work on? Where are you supposed to be right now? And... This card overall basically in, indicates like um, not making a move because we are afraid. It's not so much about timing because I feel like when you do something, whatever you touch will come to fruition because you don't just jump in and, you know, do it without a strategy. I feel that a lot of you, you ruminate, you think and you overanalyze and you you know have contingency plans so I feel like you're very methodical almost like a scientist when it comes to should I do this or should I do that and I feel like you sit down and you analyze all the different scenarios in your head before you make a move and a lot of the times it might have been very safe moves that you're making and so this room for error this um you know charging into the unknown ask questions later this is not something that you want to do even though everybody around you is telling you you have to do it you're getting support from people like uh, the higher ups you're getting support as well very positive reception from the people that you're helping you're also getting very positive support here showing that people will if you lead people will follow so you have really great um, leadership skills and you have the drive and the ambition to really motivate other people. But I feel like, you know, your personality is not like a Leo where you want the, the spotlight. Your personality is a lot more, you know, like demure behind the scenes. Uh, I do my work, you do yours. So I feel that you are somewhat like, you know, like the, the, the major arcana that represents you, the hermit. You work best behind the scenes and you don't really want to step out into the light 
to have to take on additional responsibilities, to have to do damage control, to have to deal with the public, where there is a lot of, there could potentially be a lot of opposition, where you feel like maybe I have these ideas, but people won't be on board, and I don't want to have to convince other people to get on board with me, but I feel that in any position, there are always going to be opposition. There are always going to be people that we need to convince to come over to our point of view and to see things from our perspective. And it, it permeates through relationships as well, not just in the work environment. So I feel that you are at a point here where things are starting to stagnate, right? It's comfortable. It's comfortable. And you have so much potential that needs to be cultivated. Okay, you have new skills that you need to learn. And a lot of it has to do with leadership. And I feel there is an innate, every time I see um, a Virgo in person, I, I feel like there is an innate shyness about you and an innate like chip on your shoulders where you feel like, I don't have the skills, I'm not good enough. I'm not a great communicator, I'm not a great speaker. But you are all of these things. And one of the things that they want to advise you here is that, we don't need to be an extrovert in order to be a good communicator, a good speaker, a leader. We need to communicate very well from a place of passion in order for us to be able to move people along. So throughout your life, you might have you know, been a little bit more of a wallflower. And uh, you might have shied away, I feel, from uh, social interactions. And I honestly feel like many of you have taken on responsibilities at a very very young age so that means you know taking on jobs when you um, I, I'm feeling like people as teenagers taking on like either you know having to care for siblings having to work at a really young age so then you couldn't really go out and with your friends and for whatever reason more responsibilities were imposed upon you at a younger age than all the other signs and as a result of that, you didn't have that sense of a normal childhood. You didn't have the, the, the time and the luxury to cultivate those, you know, uh, social skills that allows you to mingle with other people. And so you feel that because you might not have the ability to mingle, to banter, and to, you know, um, just naturally uh, interact with people. You sense that, oh, I don't have the great communication skills. So I feel like those things... Um, distort your ability to see yourself in a leadership capability because you might feel like oh I'm not really good at interacting with people but they're saying that if you're really passionate about something and especially if you're very knowledgeable about a specific area you can talk you can talk all day all night because you're passionate about it and so it's, it's not so much about you know being sociable because that is something very superficial it's more about being able to lead people, being able to connect to people, being able to really turn our passion, our drive into t something tangible and running with it, okay? So I'm sensing that in this spread, there is a major, major breakthrough um, happening for you for this month. And a lot of it has to deal with, you know, um, pushing you out into the public sphere, and so you are going to have to overcome anxieties. If you have social anxieties, if you have fears about, you know, being in a position of power, giving, you know, a lot of presentation, training people, um, constantly being kind of like the, the, the person that you have to, uh, that others come to, to solve their problems or to bounce ideas off of. I feel that you are going to have to overcome this inertia or this sense that you're not good enough so that you can achieve a lot more greatness for yourself. I do see a lot of hesitation, and I feel like this is still a very, very introspective month. So we need to draw within. Don't act just yet. Formulate some type of a plan and figure out, you know, realistically, what do I need to do in this present moment in time so that I can, I guess, um, so that you can, you can know for certain where you need to be and what work would be you know likely for you so I'm sensing there will be um, situations where there there's a, a, a sense of competition happening in the work environment somehow and you're gonna come out on top but it basically um, 
requires that you really stand up for your beliefs, you really advocate for something that you passionately believe in, and other people are going to be on board, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter um, whether or not you feel that you're good enough or adequate enough. I feel that you have to advocate for something. And you have to, you know, really try to convince the other people. So it's kind of like holding a, a, an opinion that I feel is right. It's a, a right opinion. But other people, for whatever reason, might not be on board. And so it's your job to try to convince them to get them on board. Because you are fighting the good fight and you're fighting for the greater good. I also feel an element here about uh, a lot of you are dealing with some type of family structure. Okay, um, and uh, this is not going to apply to all people. This is just going to apply to a few Virgoan people out there. But I'm just going to say this. I feel like you're dealing with a family structure. Um, it's, it's stable. It, it provides stability. So there is a, a way of doing, um, a way of providing for the family or a way of giving support. Um, it's... I guess this is a little bit of a hard message, but I am almost feeling like. So let me just um, you know explain this further by way of example. So this is a card about you know family institutions and um, and things like that, and I feel like they're coming in in terms of work and family. If you are working in an institutional setting, there is something very rigid that's put in place. Okay, and uh, what it does is that it provides funding. It's, uh, it's keeping the economy going, but it seems to me there's a better way to do it. It seems to me like a lot of the things based on this, a lot of the things that are done is enabling the system. It's also enabling uh, dependencies. It's creating dependencies. And so you really want to think about, is there a better way to do this? Because I feel like you're a cog in the wheel and you're a smart sign. So, of course, you know that, wait a minute, this system is not working. It seems on the surface really shiny and bright and, you know, helpful. But it's creating some type of structural systemic problem. And I feel that it's creating dependencies. And so you're going to have to be really honest and frank about that. And I do sense that, you know, if we're working, for example, in a big company and there are a lot of just inefficiencies and everybody has a job, everyone's well paid and everyone's happy. If you come on board with this opinion, you know, based on facts that things could be done a lot better. So we don't need all of these people working. We only need two. So a lot of people are going to be laid off, right? So it's kind of like it's the right opinion, but it feels to me like it's a, uh, an, a an unpopular opinion. And so I feel like you're grappling with this dilemma for this month. And because of that, you might not make a move, mainly because you don't want to throw your coworkers and other people that you work with under the bus. But I feel like you're grappling still with this ethical dilemma about like, should I or shouldn't I? And um, I feel like this is coming through in your work environment, okay? Going back to the family message, maybe this is a better explanation for this. Um, there are things that I feel you guys, some of you guys, just a small minority, especially the ones that are, um, that should know better. So I would say like, you know, if you're, let's say 35 above, okay, um, I feel that you might be kind of like the head of a family, okay? And there are things innately that are wrong within the family unit based on behavioral problems. And uh, I feel that rather than sweeping them under the rug and pretending they don't exist, I feel like um, some behaviors in the family might not be entirely healthy because it's a very, you, you see it as generosity. You see it as, you know, we're family. We need to help each other. We need to... Um, provide support for each other but if somebody is uh, enabling the the behavior the behavior doesn't get addressed and I feel that it can create a lot of problems further down the line so exercising a little bit of a you know uh, loving detachment in your family relationship is going to be important to you because I feel like I, I feel like people need to be called out on their bad behavior. And I feel like you might have a child or like um, your child or a younger, your own child, even though they're an adult or a younger child in the picture who is not, 
who's、um, who is not being held accountable for his or her actions. And I feel like in the spirit of you know、um, family love and and support, you want to gloss over this person's bad behavior, but it's、um, it's creating. A lot of problems for this person later on. It's also creating confusion for this person as they, you know, go and grow into the world, as they grow up, and they're trying to figure out what is morally right and what is morally wrong. Because I feel like they're they need that support. They need that tough tough love. They need that, you know, objectivity from you. And I feel like you want to offer love and support, and you're not stating what it it is that you believe in. And so. It can create that wave of confusion for this person as they're trying to find themselves. Okay, so I feel like that's coming through in your family. So、uh, exercising a little bit of tough love and a little bit of loving detachment and calling, holding people accountable, I feel is really important for this month. Okay, so I hope that is helpful for you, Virgos. I am very sorry for that preachy message, but I feel like it needed to be said. So. We're gonna go into your love reading and let's see what's in store for you for love, romance, and relationships for June 2017. So, love, romance, relationship for Virgos, June 2017. So once again, as I mentioned with all the other signs, I am reading this in the upright position mainly because it's easier for me with non-traditional decks. Okay, and this is a very unique deck, so it's just easier for me to have to to do it in a、um, all in the upright position. <clears throat> okay. So, let us talk about the foundation. The foundation is something that you already have the knowledge of coming into the month of、um, June. And what we have here is the three of wands, and the three of wands is basically、uh, waiting for things to come in, waiting to start the next phase or the next journey of your life. And a lot of the times,、um, with the three wands, there is some expectations from other people. There will be other people chiming in, telling you, you know, you should do this, you should do that. And I feel like the the the, the expectations coming through from other people is also a big constraint or a big deciding factor on which path you need to take. So. You're not making decisions in a vacuum here. I feel that a lot of you have the weight of responsibilities of other people that are dependent on you. So for some of you, it could be like a child, you know, your own child. Should I move here? If I move here, then、um, you know the 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 child might need to change school. And some of you, it's kind of like relationship. So I'm I'm sorry. the The focus of this is the love relationship, but I feel that some of you have like constraints from other people that are dictating. Your decisions, okay. So I feel that you're waiting on decisions. You're waiting on just a, a sense of clarity, and you're waiting on like、um, offers and, and things like that. It's linked up here with the emperor, and the emperor is basically、um, this is a very strong-minded, very very intelligent person. And I feel like some of you are in a、um, relationship with this person. It could be a fire sign, like an Aries, because this is the card that represents Aries. Or I feel that this is somebody that is coming into quite a lot of power, prestige, and prominence. And I do feel that you're waiting on another person to either, if this is you and you're in a position of prominence and prestige, you want to take the relationship to the next level. You're at a point where you're you are financially. Secure, and you want to move things along, and so your partner might be waiting on some breakthrough in his or her career life in order to make promises to you. So I feel like there's still a, a, a period of waiting, waiting for some type of a positive outcome in your work environment, 
waiting on opportunities to come in so that you and your partner can decide like what do we do next as a unit so I do feel there's a lot of cooperation overall a lot of support and kind of like that pillar of strength that you can uh, lean on so I feel a lot of you are coming into this month with a very very good relationship partner that is also serving as a mentor to you or likewise you are kind of like a mentor to your relationship partner and there's a, a mutual you know energy about both of you wanting to grow together wanting to take the relationship to the next level wanting to create a stable foundation with one another so we have stability Ability overall in relationships in the past position we have here the hermit and the eight of swords there have been a period of time where I feel like you both were kind of like at a stalemate you're trying to figure out you know what should we do as a couple how should we uh, advance forward and I do feel some of you there is a big energy here about pregnancy and conception and um, there, there's something here about child rearing, pregnancy, conception. And so the relationship was um, kind of like, you know, there, there, it, was, it seems to me like an addition of a, a, a third party into the picture via conception, via pregnancy, via children complicates the matter. And so the both of you have to try to figure out what is the best we can achieve here and what's the, the, the best strategy that we can, you know, all move forward so that we can have a stable relationship. So there's a lot of talks, a lot of conversation, I feel, happening in the past between you and a relationship partner. One person felt very stuck. They felt like financially or career-wise, professionally, or for whatever reason, they felt like they weren't ready. And I feel like you were the one giving them a lot of guidance, a lot of mentorship, a lot of support, and a lot of wisdom, too, so that they can break out of this prison in which they're... Um, they're very uncertain, very mobilized by fear, and you have provided that, you know, that pillar of strength for the other per your partner to lean on. So I feel like you have um, gone through a major, major period of um, growth together as a unit, which brings us to the next, um, to the, the present situation. We have here the Ace of Coins, and usually I think of this as taking the relationship to the next level, proposals happening for you and with the world as well. I feel some of you are going to solidify your relationship. So this is coming through as a major, major uh, proposal. And I also feel some of you, there is a major job that's happening, um, affecting the relationship, but I feel in a positive way, okay? So you or, or your partner can also be in... Um, uh, can be shifting jobs or there's like a, a huge income boost and all of it I feel like it's happening for the better so that means now that you have more money now that you have more disposable income I feel that the both of you are going through the motions of like do we buy a house do we have children now do we you know settle down do we live with our parents so there are major family planning some major important decisions regarding engagement marriage getting involved taking the relationship to the, the next level happening for you guys and i i felt the same energy with um taurus people so maybe when i do capricorn i'll, I'll see if the energy is still there because it feels like Earth signs are getting a lot of relationship support. So crowning this reading is something that you're thinking about. We have here the Three of Swords, and the Three of Swords usually indicates, you know, separation or something like that. Um, it indicates as well harsh words possibly exchanged between two people that can create an emotional rift, as well as the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups in this context it basically denotes a situation where you have multiple options that are laid out. Um, before you and you're thinking you know weighing out the pros and cons weighing out your option and, and trying to figure out the best outcome and I do sense that there has been you know um, some type of a relationship from the past that you're still it's still a little bit raw so singles for this month I don't feel that you're heavily dating okay I, I don't feel singles going out and dating I feel like your career is really your top priority for this um, this month and then I also feel that you know the the coupled people you're still trying to decide 
you're still trying to decide how to move things to the next level. And I feel that a lot of it rests upon whether or not you're going to get a new job or shift job. And then it's, it's also resting upon your partner. Where is your partner financially? Are you both going to be able to have that, that extra, you know, salary increase? Are you both going to have that disposable income? Because I feel like there is something big, like a big pregnancy, a big addition to the family. Moving forward into the future position, we have here the Page of Cups, which is, and then the Ten of Cups. So I feel like there is a child being brought into the picture, and there's a lot of family um, love, support, and bliss overall in your relationships. For those of you who are single, I do feel there is a potential here to have. I feel like somebody in is, um, is showing their interest in you, and you might be hurt. You might have recently, you know, it, it feels to me like, oh, it's too soon. I'm not ready to date yet. And so I feel that you have here a water sign. So this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio uh, providing, you know, opportunities, like soliciting you to go out. And it's linked up here with the Ten of Cups. And so I feel like there can be a very good relationship to be had here. But I, I feel like emotionally, emotionally, you're not ready. So I feel a lot of new single people out there or people that are in solid relationships that are going to be taken to the next level. OK, um, I hope the reading resonates with you and I hope that it is helpful for you. But we have some really good, positive connections to be made this month with new people. OK, so you have like a, a lot of new support, but I also feel some of you might be welcoming like a new addition to your family, like a pet even, a child, and, and things like that coming into the relationship, which will really fortify and strengthen the relationship, I feel, okay? So Virgos, best of luck with everything. I wish you all the best for this month. And um, if you'd like to book a private reading, the information to my scheduling website is below. If you'd like to donate to the channel as well, uh, the link is down below. And uh, I'm not sure what the um, June schedule is going to look like. So it's going to change week to week. So if you're looking to book an appointment, um, I would say the earliest I can start to open it up is next Friday because uh, I'm going through some transitions here. And I don't know what my, my, my schedule is going to look like uh, week to week. So I'll start to open it up, you know, like Friday night or something. Um, to set up for the next week so if you go on the website and it's all booked up um, Friday is when it's gonna open up again and Friday is when I'll know you know how many uh, clients I can take as uh, and such okay um, I'm, I'm do dealing with some massive massive restructuring in my life uh, for the month of June and it might involve like a major relocation so I'm trying to figure out what my schedule is going to look like so it's a little bit all up in the air okay but I do wish you all the best and uh, I will also be back for the mid-month reading as well so I, I like to keep the videos consistent okay because it's helpful to people so best of luck with everything Virgos uh, take care of yourself okay I'll be back for the mid-month reading bye bye